have a beautiful voice. <laughs> we are picking up in our study, again, that I, had, uh, I ended with two weeks ago, uh, Joseph's faith in God's plan. I just wanted to explain that again, that uh, it's referring to, the title is referring to Joseph's faithfulness during the time that God was taking him through something that God called him to. Uh, and Joseph wasn't aware of it. You know, we know from the story, he had some dreams early on in his life when he was 17 years old, but he didn't know the interpretation of those dreams. He didn't know what all that meant. But uh, as and we're going to be looking at today, I want to go right to those verses that talk about how he remembered those dreams that he had. And uh, then what I'd like to do, uh, you know, I, when I started going through this study, I read several times through this, and I've been doing this for, uh, it's nearly 25 times through my Bible now, but reading through this story and reading many times, and just it always captivated my attention, the experiences that Joseph went through at 17 years old and then all the way up to 30 years old when he became uh, the, ru the ruler, the second in command of Egypt. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, Genesis uh, 22. We went over this uh, passage the last time we were together, but here it, rem it mentions when Joseph remembered the dreams that he had. I'll read from 20, or 42, 1 through 9. It says, when Joseph, Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, why do you look one upon another? And he said, behold, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Get you down there and buy for us from there that we may live and not die. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy grain in Egypt. Now, just to fill in a little bit, uh, we were all here a couple weeks ago, but in the, uh, the story of uh, Joseph's life, uh, he, uh, through his experiences, when his brothers threw him into a pit, uh, which they first intended to just kill him, and then uh, Reuben stepped in and said, no, throw him into a pit, uh, and Reuben intended to come back and get him out of the pit, let him go back to his dad. And he was the oldest in the family, and he was still looking out for his younger brother, and he didn't intend to have him killed. But his other brothers, after they threw him into the pit, came up with the idea to sell him off. And apparently Reuben went off somewhere taking care of business, and uh, the others decided, let's sell him to these merchants that are passing by. So that's what they did. They drew him up out of the pit, they sold him, and then Joseph went into uh, Egypt. That's where these merchants were headed to sell their wares and stuff, and uh, possibly some other servants or slaves, and now Joseph was one of them. And he went in, he went into Potiphar's house, and he served there for approximately 10 years, and then we're gonna get into all the details later, but he was then thrown into prison after he served for 10 years in Potiphar's house. And then he was in prison for uh, two, possibly three years uh, and had experiences there. And then from prison is where he was then brought out and brought before Pharaoh uh, because Pharaoh had these dreams about the, uh, uh, the, the cows first that came up out of the river and there were seven fat and healthy cows that came up. Uh, and then after them came up seven skinny and just famished uh, cows that came out. And they ate up the first seven cows. And it says that the cows, you'd think after they ate up the other cows that they would look fat now. But they were still as skinny as they were when they first came out of the river. And then the next dream was uh, uh, seven ears of corn on a stalk that were full and healthy. Uh, and they came up and sprouted. And then it says that there were seven ears of corn that came up that just looked sick and dry and uh, something you wouldn't want to eat. 
And it said that they consumed the first seven ears and you wouldn't even know that there were ever the seven first ears. And Joseph interpreted that dream to Pharaoh about that God was going to bring seven years of famine into the land. And after the seven years, well, first seven years of plenty, there was going to be plenty of supplies for everyone. And then after those uh, seven years of plenty would come in the seven years of a famine. So where we're at here in the story is uh, Jacob, whose name is Israel, uh, sent his sons down uh, to Egypt to buy food because they were already into the famine. The seven years were passed, and I'm sure it, uh, Jacob's family had plenty during that time, and not just Pharaoh's, the, the land of Egypt, but all the countries in the area were in the same situation. No one had food. But because of God's plan uh, of providing through Joseph's leadership of storing up for that, those seven years, now Joseph was in charge of selling and distributing all that store that they, they stored up for the seven years. And uh, now Jacob's family is coming in because they need food. And they came before Jacob and they, well, they came before Joseph. They did not know that it was Joseph. He was now uh, 13 years older uh, because it says he was 30 years old when he became ruler in, in uh, Egypt, but he was 17 years old when he was thrown into the pit. So it was 13 years, and the changes that he went through, I guess the outfits that he wore there in Egypt, they didn't recognize him. And being in that land, he spoke the Egyptian uh, language and even said they had <clears throat> an interpreter there for uh, Joseph to communicate to his brothers. And that's how he communicated to them, is through an interpreter. So here we are, his brothers, uh, their dad sent them down and said, look, we're gonna die. Go down to Egypt and buy food for us. Uh, verse three, and Joseph's 10 brethren went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob, sent not with his brethren, for he said, lest perhaps mischief shall befall him. He already had his other younger son, Joseph, who they all presumed is dead. Uh, you know, he lost him. He said, I'm not going to lose another son, my youngest son. Uh, verse 5, And the sons of Israel came to buy grain among those that came for the famine was in the land of Canaan. And Joseph was the governor over the land, and he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but they but made himself strange unto them, and spoke roughly unto them. And he said unto them, From where come ye? And they said, from a, the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph knew his brethren, <clears throat> but they knew him not. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them. And said unto them, ye are spies to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. So he recognized, and it's here where God brought it to his memory of the dream that he had. And if you remember the dreams that we read over uh, a few weeks ago, uh, he said to his brothers, I had a dream. And the uh, 11 stalks of grain uh, bowed down to my stalk. Uh, the, and when they would gather grain, they'd bundle it up and there were big stalks. And they said, the 11 bowed down to mine. And they hated him. The scripture that we read said they hated him for his dreams. And, uh, you know, and they said, shall we bow down to you? And then the other dream he had was that the, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars bow, made obeisance and, and bowed to him, his star. And even his dad, it says, rebuked him for that dream. And his brothers hated him all the more. It says that they couldn't even speak to him peaceably. They just despised him. Uh, and what's interesting, when we go back through some of these details, I want to look closely to see... Uh, you know, what are some of the details and how God worked out all these details? 
just considering this is given as an example to us. It tells us that in 1 Corinthians 10, that all these things are recorded for our learning. They're examples to us that we wouldn't follow in the wrong direction, but we would see the faith and the righteousness of people and choose to follow that. So this example was given uh, for us. So I wanna look at the different aspects of it and realize that Joseph wasn't some elite spiritual guy that God said, you know, I'm gonna use that kid. Uh, it was a kid that, a young man at 17 that had the same kind of feelings and emotions we have and then to look at how he handled the situations that are recorded. And I'm sure there's so many different experiences that he went through uh, during his life, but God had these certain things recorded for us to see the details in it. And I wanna dig into them as we work through this to see how did he handle these things. And this is coming from our study that we did in Hebrews chapter 12, when it says the chastening of the Lord uh, is not, uh, pleasant but grievous and the idea that what God did in Joseph's life to prepare him to be the second in command and God had a purpose in that now we may say well because I mean look at Joseph had to protect the the nation of Israel eventually would they would become the nation of Israel but it's something that God called him to and yet he wasn't a puppet that God was using and making him do whatever he wanted to do. Joseph had a choice in the things that he had to, to, to was called to do. He could have meant gone many different ways. And it's interesting as we look at it in uh, Hebrews, that as it talks about the, uh, the chastening of the Lord is not pleasant, but grievous, but it said, nevertheless, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness to them who are exercised by it. With the things that we go through, are we being exercised towards righteousness? When we go through difficult and hard times, do we get frustrated and bitter and even get angry with God because of the situations that we're in? Or, we, or do we look at God as a position of our heavenly father and we hold him in reverence, even in the midst of difficult times? And it's talking about the faith that Joseph had. It mentions him in uh, chapter 11 as one of those people that uh, had faith in God. And, uh, you know, so I, wanna, I wanted to dig into his life more. Now let's take a look then, the next reference here. There's a lot of situations he went on after he said, no, you're spies. Then they, they went on to explain, no, we're, we're, seven, we're 11 brethren, uh, well, 12, and then we have one that was not, which they're assuming that was Joseph, uh, that was dead. And our youngest brother is back home with dad. Uh, and we're standing here, the 10 of them. Uh, and he, they're trying to explain he knew all that. He's testing them to see what they're going to say in all of it. Uh, but then if we go to chapter 43... Verses 25 to 28, it says, And they made ready the present for Joseph's coming at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. Now I'll fill in what happened in the story, because they, Joseph let them go. When he first met them and said, No, you're spies, he said, uh, and they said, No, we're not. We're just here to buy food just like everybody else. Uh, he said, okay, I'm going to uh, test you. Uh, it says even in uh, chapter 43, in verse 17, and he put them all together into prison three days. Uh, you know, and I, I think Joseph was, God was leading him through this, but Joseph was just like working his way through, what should I do with my brothers? He put them all together into a prison and he let them talk for three days. And then he came, brought them out and said, I'm going to keep one of you as a hostage. You're going to stay in prison. The rest go back. And he sent them back, not empty-handed. He still was caring for his family. He sent them back with provisions. And if you remember the story, he had his butler put a cup, one of their cups uh, of the kingdom of gold, in one of the backpacks. Uh, no, that was the, that was the next step. Uh, he put their money, the butler put their money 
back in their backpacks on their mules and sent them off. And then when they got halfway home, they stopped and found out all their money is back in their packs. And they were even more scared because they're going to look like thieves, like they did something wrong. They got back to their dad. They told him everything about it. Dad was angry because uh, now he's got another son that's gone. Simeon is back in prison. And Joseph said, to prove that you're telling me the truth, you bring your younger brother the next time you come. And don't, I don't want to see your faces unless your younger brother is with you. So they told their dad, and their dad said, no way, you're not taking Benjamin. I'm not going to lose another son. Uh, so it, it doesn't tell us how much time went by, but Joseph had sent them back with food uh, provisions, and they didn't come back until they used up all that. And then uh, Jacob finally said, okay, you know, we're going to die here if we don't have food. So go back, go head back and get food. And I think it was Reuben that uh, mentioned, or it might have been Judah that said, well, he told us, don't come back. We don't, I don't want to see your face unless you're younger brother. So there was a back and forth with Jacob. And he said, all right, if I'm going to be bereaved of my son, I'll be bereaved. He said, take Jake, uh, Benjamin with you uh, and take double the money with you. And the present that it's re referring to was all the fine spices and stuff. Even though they were in a famine, there were certain things that, uh, that Jacob and his family were very good at, at spices and stuff like that. So that's what they gathered together to be able to give to Pharaoh as a present. So when it says here uh, in 25... And they made ready the present. When they came back to the kingdom, uh, they had Benjamin with them. You know, there are so many little details. We don't have time to go over all of it. When Joseph actually saw his brother, this was his younger brother who was from his actual mother. We talked about uh, Rachel and Leah and Bilhah and Zilpah, the, the wives of Jacob. So... Uh, Rachel is the one that had Joseph, and Joseph had his little brother that was from his mom. He was so precious. And I would imagine uh, that when he was being ridiculed by his family, it says they couldn't even speak peaceably to him. I bet you his brother was his pal. <laughs> I could relate to this as I was thinking through. My brother was three years younger than me, and uh, my brother was killed in a car accident uh, when he was 28 years old. He was my buddy. I mean, we had our fights as, as uh, kids growing up, but we slept in the same room. We shared the same room. We, uh, uh, it, when we got older, we went hunting together, just him and I, and we went fishing together. Two weeks before his accident, we were out fishing with Harold uh, in his boat. So I could relate to this, uh, how Joseph must have been so close. And it says that when he saw jo uh, Benjamin, his younger brother, he went away. He had to get himself away from his brothers because he was still making strange to them like he didn't know them. And he had to cry. He had to cry in a room somewhere and then clean himself up and then come back out to be able to communicate with them. So he felt the pull of this is my younger brother. So he says here in 24 or in 26, and when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house and bowed himself to him to the, to the earth. Again, they bowed before him. Remember his dream? <laughs> and he asked them their welfare and said, is your father well, the old man of whom you spoke? Is he yet alive? And they answered, thy servant, our father, is in good health. He is yet alive, and they bowed down their heads and made obeisance. Exactly what that dream was that he had, that the, uh, the stalks of grain bowed down to him. Uh, I keep referring to what we're going to look into because I want to look back at the details of how God brought Joseph from those dreams, from being a 17-year-old kid that his brothers hated, all the way to the point of right now when he's leader uh, and not just of his brothers, but all the land of Egypt and all the countries around that had to come and buy grain 
Joseph was the man. He was second in command. He handled all the stuff. He had all the people under him that would do all the, the storing of the grain and, and everything. He was the second in command of all of it. And to see how God's hand was in all that, we don't know all the details, but God's hand was in all that. There's some things that we're going to look at that we don't have an answer for. Uh, it was necessary for Joseph to get into Egypt. His brothers had to, they had to hate him to, for that whole plan to work out. What part is it that God worked in all that? You know, that's some interesting stuff. It could be controversial as far as what items God worked in. Uh, you know, later, years later, when uh, during Exodus, when uh, God hardened Pharaoh's heart, there's a lot of talk about what does that mean, he hardened Pharaoh's heart. John was covering that in our study on Wednesday night. And it was an interesting discussion about what that actually means. But uh, God was working, as we look at these different details, to think God's plan in some of these terrible situations that Joseph had to go through, God was working his plan all through there, but yet Joseph was faithful in all of it. And I thought, I want to look at his faithfulness. And again, I'm sure he felt some of the disappointment of uh, oh, all the disappointment of not being rescued and saved out of these situations. He had to go through it. So again, here they, they bowed down to him. Let's take a look over at chapter 45. And again, there's other details that are working through this, which we're not going to go over right now, but 45, 1 to 15. It says, then Joseph could not control himself before all them who stood by him. And he cried, cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. Now, up to this point, when he brought them in, they brought that present before Joseph. Uh, they presented it. Joseph... Uh, had them, he told his butler, uh, at lunchtime, I'm going to have my brothers come and have lunch with me. Now, his brothers didn't know what was going on. They didn't say, hey, we're pretty, we're pretty well set here because we're going to have lunch with Pharaoh's second in command. They were scared to death. They didn't know why was he bringing them in to be at lunch with them. So they thought he was going to try to uh, Get him because he was still saying, You're spies, you're spies. And uh, he set out a food supplies and he actually had them seated from the oldest down to the youngest. Some leader of a country wouldn't know all that unless he knew their family. <laughs> they, the Bible says, they were amazed when they looked and saw that they were all seated from the oldest to the youngest. They didn't say anything to any of the butlers there. But it says that, uh, that he sat before Benjamin, I forget the it was like seven times more food that he put before Benjamin than the rest of them. And it wasn't that Joseph was, uh, he was still trying to test them. It wasn't that he was playing favoritism uh, in this, because we're going to see that God was working in his mind through it all also. Uh, and I think as he was testing his brothers, uh, God was working in Joseph's mind in how to handle all this stuff too. So it says in verse uh, 2 of chapter 45, and he wept aloud. So when he said, everyone go out, he had been working at testing his brothers and communicating them through an interpreter, he couldn't handle it anymore. His emotions were getting so overcome with his brother, his youngest brother there, and even his other brothers. He didn't feel hatred and resentment for them, uh, and he couldn't control himself anymore. And it says, and he wept aloud. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard, and Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. 
Can you imagine? I'd love to have been there to watch that, <laughs> to see when he said, I am Joseph. And it, it, while the brothers were speechless, the scripture tells us they were speechless. And I would imagine everything is rushing back to their mind of what they did in throwing him into the pit. Uh, there's some other uh, scriptures I passed over when they were put into prison. Joseph stood there and listened to them. Uh, at one point when they stood before him, listened to them communicate among them. And they didn't think that Joseph knew anything because they thought he, he didn't understand the Hebrew language. And he knew everything they were saying. And they were saying, see, this is punishment from God because we saw Joseph's anguish in his face and we ignored it when he cried unto us, which just showed he was probably pleading with his brothers, don't, don't do this, don't do this. You know, he didn't want to be separated from his parents and his brothers and his home, and they didn't care. They just threw him in the, in the prison. Well, didn't throw, they threw him into the pit and got rid of him. Unfortunately, you know, they didn't follow through with killing him. And he said, Oh, here in uh, three, and Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were terrified at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye have sold me here, for God did send me before you to preserve life. I just believe that this was all unfolding in Joseph's mind uh, as he was witnessing all this and experiencing it. I don't believe God showed him in the beginning, just hold out, here's a dream, your brothers are gonna come, you're gonna, and laid it all out. Joseph had to make these decisions on the moment, handle his anger, maybe some resentment. He had to handle himself in how he was going to perceive and, and handle this situation. And he said, God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall neither be plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you pr to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. I believe he saw what was happening and God did start to bring this into his mind. When it says he remembered that they, uh, the dream that he had and he saw his brothers bowing down, it started to unfold in his mind, this is God's plan. This is what God had planned. That's why I had to go through all this stuff. And he started reviewing all this in his mind. And he had that kind of a relationship with the Lord that he didn't get bitter. Now, in Hebrews uh, chapter 12, a little bit further, it says, lift up the hands of the hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet uh, that you be not turned out of the way. Uh, and it talks about uh, not getting, uh, I forget the exact word, but I want to go by memory. The bitterness he refers to, for many, will be affected by it. If Joseph allowed himself to hold on to the anger and bitterness and not see it with the perspective that God was involved in all this, oh boy, he could get even with his brothers. He could have done anything to his brothers. But he had that kind of a relationship with God. And he said, and God has sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me here, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout the land of Egypt. Haste ye and go up to my father and say unto him, Thus saith thy son, Joseph, God hath made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not. Jacob had to have a pretty strong heart 
physically. <laughs> Otherwise, he had so many reasons to have a heart attack or a stroke because of all this stuff and the, and the things that were unfolding, the loss of Joseph and then Simeon being in prison and then Benjamin and now Benjamin's taken and he's sitting back there waiting for word. And now to find out Joseph is alive. Joseph said, come on, come on down into Egypt. God hath made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not. And thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me, thou and thy children and thy children's children, and thy flocks and thy herds, and all that thou hast. And there will I nourish thee, for yet there are five years of famine, lest thou and thy household and all that thou hast come to poverty. And behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that it is my mouth that speaketh unto you. And ye shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt, and of all that ye have seen, and ye shall haste and bring down my father here. And he fell down upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. Just the beauty of two brothers coming together and just embracing each other. Benjamin thinking his close pal, his brother, his older brother was dead and now he's with him and he's of this kind of authority. Moreover, he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them and after that his brethren talked with him. All this time, they were speechless. They just stood there and watched what was going on, just so scared to death that any moment, Joseph could have them killed or put in prison. Now I want to jump over to chapter 50, and this is what John read uh, this morning here. And this is at the end. Now, this time frame now, it says, and when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, in verse 15, they said, Joseph will perhaps hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did to him. He's going to get revenge. As it's talking about this in verse 15, Jacob the, uh, came down and all their family came into Egypt. They were set up in the land of Goshen. They were made comfortable. They were fed. And then Jacob was getting old. It was actually 17 years later from the time they came into Egypt, now 17 years later, when uh, Jacob dies. And just that prior, early in chapter 50, it talks about him dying, and they had a funeral. They actually took him back to their land to bury him where he wanted to be buried uh, with his wives. Uh, and now they came back to the kingdom, and now they're saying, okay, now that dad's not here, they figured Jacob or Joseph was probably under some type of uh, authority from their dad, and that was keeping them from, uh, keeping Joseph from killing them. And they came up with this plan, uh, and he said, perhaps he will hate us and will certainly, you know, recompense us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph saying, thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sins, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy servants, of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spoke unto him. Seventeen years later, they're still scared. <laughs> before him that he's going to get even with them. He was 13 years from the time he was 17 to the time he became ruler. He served the other seven years during the plenty. And now, and then the first two years of uh, the famine, and yet he saw God's plan in it. He wasn't harboring bitterness and anger in all that, uh, but yet his brothers, still had that fear inside of them that Joseph was going to get even with them. 18, 
It says, and his brethren also went and fell down. And, jo- and his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, behold, we are thy servants. Still those dreams, his brothers are bowing down before him. And Joseph said unto them, fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save many people alive. Now therefore, fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones And he comforted them and spoke kindly unto them. Look at just the words it says. He comforted them and spoke kindly unto them. Uh, There's so much, again, that he could have done, even now when his dad is out of the picture, to get even with his brothers. But his submission was to God, and he was answering to God. Uh, And he recognized, after all this time, he was still watching God's plan worked out in all this, and his faithfulness was to God. Not the position that he had, not the opportunities that he could have taken at that time to bring just judgment on his brothers. And he spoke to them with comforting words, and he loved them, and he cared for them. And it just was a beautiful experience of Joseph's life and what could have been. Now, when we go into this a little bit uh, further, I wrote a questionnaire, how about, uh, think about it. How did God send David into Egypt to be in the position of such authority? When we pick this up again, I'm going to be away next week one more time, and then uh, John's going to be doing next uh, Sunday. I'll be back, and we're going to continue on. That should be the last time I'm away uh, for quite a while. Uh, And as I mentioned, I want to go into some of these, the details of when he went into Potiphar's household. What did he learn during that time and what happened to get him out of Potiphar's uh, household? And many of you know what happened, but I wanna look closely at that and see how Joseph handled himself along the way and how it ties in with Hebrews chapter 12, the instructions for us and for anyone that's a believer in Christ How are we supposed to handle these kinds of unexpected things that happen, crises in our life? We can get bitter over it and angry. Uh, We can take the opportunity when it's given to us to minister judgment to people that we feel deserve it. But or do we minister grace in the midst of it? Are we allowing the Lord to control the situation? So I think it's going to be interesting as we look into some of these details and see what Joseph could have done, but how he submitted in faith to what God was doing. And even though he didn't know the end of the story, he had to live that day what God put on his heart. And he went about and he did it faithfully. So we're going to look into that more. Let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for all that you have recorded in your word for our learning. Lord, I pray that each one of us would take the time, make the discipline that we need to be in, to be reading it, to be thinking through it. And as you tell us, Lord, to meditate on these things and hide it in our heart. So when we are faced with situations that are unexpected, some things that just seem to uh, blow up in our face, But Lord, help us to see you in the midst of it, that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, that uh, we're to be faithful. Help us to grow through this study. Help us to be uh, stronger in our faith and just be more determined uh, each day that passes to be draw closer and closer to you. I just pray your blessing upon each one today. And uh, I just pray that you just guide our country through these times. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen.